Good morning everyone, my name is Damien, welcome to Irish Fido. Uh, I was getting a good few questions about my rods, reels and stuff like that. So I've decided to go out today and make a video just so I can show you my gears the way I fish, okay? Uh, well, this video will be dedicated to uh, beginners, uh, really, to be honest, uh, as I'm going to go through all the details, everything you need to know to start feeder fishing, okay? So it'll be kind of like a back to basics and stuff like that, you know. Um, it's quite early in the morning, it's still dark out there, so... I'll talk to you once I get to the bank. Stay with me and enjoy. Now guys, I just arrived, I brought all my gears over here and the first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'll do when I get to the bank is my mix. I already have some mix there, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what type of granby do you use, it just doesn't matter. But why do I, why do I want my mix done first, because it's like two or three step move right so we have to put some water in it leave it for about 20 minutes let the ground bait absorb all the water then we have to come back see if it's dry or not if it's dry we have to put a bit of water more water in it then leave it for another 10 minutes or so and then it's very which is very important we have to we have to put it through the riddle uh, I have the riddle there, but I'll show you that later on. So first step is preparing the mix. So I'm going to put a bit of water in there. So that's it. Now I'm going to leave it for about 20 minutes to half an hour and then I'll come back to it. And the next step I'm going to show you is how to set up the platform, okay? Now guys, very important thing is safety. Don't forget, safety force, okay? So when you trying to set up your platform, do not, never walk into the water like this, into the lake with your platform up high right what I'm gonna do is I always keep the platform in front of me right and I let the legs touch in the bottom just so I can see just so I can know what's in front of me because I can't I can't see I, I don't know what's in front of me there might be like a, a shelf or a drop off or something like that and you're gonna make that step and you'll be gone okay so let the platform touch the bottom force and then you walk in behind it and then once you find the right spot set it up and that's it remember safety forced okay now let me talk to you about the rods I have okay just 
few minutes. Now the rods I'm using, uh, they're mostly uh, uh, Cupertini rods, okay. Um, for kind of long range fishing, uh, I use Tubertini Concept Fido TB, that's what they call it. It's up to 100 grams casting weight and it's a medium action. Okay, for my short line, again, Tubertini Atrix, it's only 3 meter rod, again, medium action, and I think it's up to a 45 gram casting weight. Okay. Now, I know there's loads of different types of rods out there and you'll be asking yourself like what type of rod do I use, what type of rod do I buy, especially when you're a beginner, okay? So my advice is, well first of all, there's let's say three different types of rods, okay? First will be soft action, which is very soft, okay? Simple as that. Um, another one is the medium, medium action, which I use them a lot. Uh, and the last one is like a hard, stiff rod, okay? Now, I, why do I use medium action rods? Especially in the winter time, I, I would never, well, sometimes I do, but I'm trying not to use the, the hard, the st stiff rods, okay? Because you can lose the fish on the way in. Like, once you're widening in, you can lose the fish because there's no, nothing to absorb the, the tension, okay? So, medium action for beginners, I'd say, they'll be perfect, okay? And it's quite simple. Just go and get a three meter rod that's that will cover your short range fishing okay up to 40 meters that, it'll be perfect and don't forget uh, to get a medium action because i believe that rod in a medium action it gives you extra comfort while you hook the fish okay and for your long range you'll be talking about four meter length rod okay because don't forget you need that extra length to cast out further out okay so four meter rod will be perfect and again medium action i use especially in the winter time i use braid direct so i need kind of like a medium action rod because again i have that extra comfort once I hook the, the bigger fish, okay? Now, let's talk about the reels. Now guys, once again, there's loads of different types of reels out there. And it's it's really hard to, to, to choose the right one, right? Well, what I would recommend it, uh, I wouldn't go for like expensive reels. Uh, as you can see, I've pressed these reels. I'm really happy with them. Uh, for my long range feeder fishing, I use Preston Intensity 720. Good reel, good enough reel. Uh, my next one will be Preston Extremity, which is the, uh, the older version of the Intensity. Okay, it's a very good reel as well. Now, as as I says, like there's loads of different types, and I have like good few reels, okay. So I won't be talking through all the, those reels. This one here is actually Mikado, right? Blackstone Mikado. I got that reel about eight or nine years ago, and I only paid I think fifty euro for that reel, and it's still going. Like there's there's no issue, there's no problems. Uh, so. Again, like I wouldn't spend, I wouldn't spend like two, three hundred euro for the reel, because I think it's not, it's not really important thing to pay a lot of money for the reel. As you can see, fifty euro for that reel there, and still going, no problems. So, and it's only four thousand. Yeah, that's a four thousand reel size. Okay. 
that's for uh, that's for my short short range fishing. <clears throat> Now, well, I, th I think that's all about the reels, really, that uh, I use. Now, once again, that's a big reel for long-range feeder fishing. Now, smaller, kind of a little bit smaller reels for short-range. And that's all, really, that's all, really, you need to know. Now, guys, now I'll show you how to plumb up the swim, okay? Well, how do I do that, anyway? Now, I'm pushing one and a half ounce bomb, okay? Because I start plumbing up from the, the distance. If I, if I want to uh, fish close in, okay? I would only use like a 30, 30 gram, which is one ounce bomb, okay? Now, how to start? What I do is, if I don't know the lake, right, if I don't know where to go, where to, I'm trying to find, the most important thing is to try, try to find out uh, the little drop-offs or kind of like a, a stone gravelly bottom or something like that. That's very good for fishing, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna chalk about 20 meters out and count to seconds. Then I'm going to chalk about 30 meters, count the seconds again. Then 40, 50, 60 meters. Now, what that's going to give me, this is going to give me like a, a picture of the bottom, okay? It's not going to be perfect anyway, but at least I know, is there any different in depths, okay? So let's start anyway. Two, three, now, about 20 meters out, there's three seconds. Two, three, same again. Now that's 30 meters out and it's same again. Three seconds again. Now that's about 50 meters out and it's four seconds, okay? Let's go about 65 meters because that's the range I want to fish today. 65, 70 meters, I'm going to chalk and see what it's like over there. Nearly five seconds, okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip up that distance, okay. And I'm going to try, I'm going to check the bottom, try to check the bottom, like what's it like? Is it muddy? Is it but the stones or gravel in it? Or what's it like, okay? <clears throat> That's very important. Make sure there's no snacks. It's free of snacks because you start fishing without checking it and you'll be losing the fish. You lose your rigs and everything and it's pointless. So check, check the swim first. So just simply pull the rod towards the bank and watch the tip. Now I can see tip it's bouncing what that tells me yeah and that's telling me that on the bottom it's quite hard bottom and it might be like a, a stones rocks in there well not rocks but like a bit of gravel or something like that you know So yeah, I would be happy with that, okay? 
because I don't like to fish in the muddy bottom. I always try to fight, find a bit of gravel, like a hard bottom, if you know what I mean. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to really back, really back in, okay. I'm going to chuck to that distance again. And I'm going to wind in like five turns, okay? One, two, three, four, five. Five turns. And I'm going to clip up again. Read it back in. And chalk again. One, two, three, four. Now, that's telling me it, it was four seconds, five turns back. It was four, only four seconds. And yeah, so that's about three and a half meter. It's quite shallow. This lake is quite shallow. Uh, I know it is like three, three and a half to four meters over there. I know that. So three and a half. So what we're going to do is I'm going to wind up again, five turns again. One, two, three, four, five. Now, clipped up again. Read it in. And chalk it back out. One, two, three, four. It's it's nearly four. So again, as you can see, it's kind of it's shallowing up, right? So yeah, we can we can check the bottom. What's it like over there? It's still kind of the same. It's still the same. Bit of moosh, bit of stones, which is right. It's good enough. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get rid of all that clips I have. Well, just the two anyway. The last two clips. Reel it in. So yeah, well, I think that's very good way of checking the bottom, right? Once again. Two, three, four. Yeah, that's. It's a little bit over four, so yeah, that's that's a, that's four meters out there. It's four meters deep out there. Okay, so I'm gonna stay at that distance anyway today. But that's very important. Just you have to plumb up your swim, okay, before you start fishing. And I think that is the, the good way of plumbing up your swim. Cast out about 70 meters or something like that, and then go backwards. Five turns, clipped up again, check the bottom. Five turns, clipped up again, check the bottom again. And then you will have like a picture of the bottom, what's in front of you. Okay? As you can see, very simple. Guys, I show you quickly the, the water, color of the water. It's like in the summertime, it's, it's kind of like a greeny color. As you can see, 
So I'm not going to use the keep net and keep the fish in the net because it's just, the water is just terrible out, out here, to be honest. I wonder is that the weeds or something. If you have any idea why it's like that during the winter, just please comment below this video. Now I'll show you my side tree as well. Now that's the, uh, I, unfortunately I don't have any maggots or pinkies or anything like that. All I have is dead maggots. They're mixed with casters. They were freezed. Now that's the mix. And that's everything. That's everything for today anyway. Like I, I like to keep it simple. So there's the mix. That's the, uh, the casters and the maggots. I have some worms over there, but I don't think I'm going to use it today. We'll see how it goes anyway. Now, I think I forgot to mention that before, but once you find the right spot, once you plumbed up your swim and you find the right spot where you want to fish, you're happy with, always count the turns, okay, just in case something happens. Or you can use measuring sticks as well and quickly measure them on, the, on uh, your distance on the sticks. But I, I wouldn't do that to be honest. I just count the turns, okay? Uh, just in case something happened and you have to do that over again, you have to plumb your swim again, then you know what type of distance you're fishing. Let's say I'm fishing, um, today I clipped up at 71 turns, okay? So if something happened, I can easily go back to the same distance again. Right, so let's start the session. Uh, I'm gonna put two dead reds on the hook, okay? Because I don't have any live maggots, so I've no choice to be honest. Always put a few casters and the maggots into the mix every time I cast. Just push it into the feeder with the mix with the ground bait and be ready to go now another important thing is that I didn't mention before you have to find a marker on the on the far bank okay just to be accurate every time you cast that's very important especially in the winter time you have to be very accurate okay now what do i have on my reels my reels are loaded with braid okay i use the guru guru braid I think it's Pulse 8, they call it, or something like that. It's 0 0.12, I think I have, on the, on the big reels, on the long range fishing. And I have 0.10 on the short range fishing, okay? On the other reels. <clears throat> so, in the summertime, in the summertime, I do use shark leader. Okay, I use two lengths of rod of mono. And in the winter time, I don't use any shock leaders. I just fish braid direct, okay? So, why? Because in the winter time, um, sometimes it's hard to see the bites. The bites are, might be very shy and only little indication that's all you might see and i believe if you use shock leader it's not or even mono direct okay you might not be able to see that bite and braid there's no stretch on the braid okay so every little move it will indicate on your tip okay in the summertime, the bites are more positive. There's more fish, more bigger fish around, and they're hungry, and you'll be able to see the bites. That's why I use a, a shock leader. 
because again it'll give me that extra comfort while I'm playing with the fish. Now at the start of a session <clears throat> I'm going to be very positive. I'm going to chalk probably every uh, two minutes or so. I, I'm not going to pre-bait or anything like that. I'm just going to fish. I'm fishing straight away but I'm going to be very positive. Now it's going to be five quick chalks and see and I'll be able to see if I'm going to get any bites or not. If not, I'm going to chalk every five minutes then. And if I'm still not going to get any bites, I'm going to leave the feeder out there for about 10 minutes. Now another thing is what type of tips do we have to use? Now if you're buying a rod, feeder rod, there's, it always comes with three or four or five tips. It depends on the, on the brand and, and stuff like that. But there's normally three tips comes with the rod, okay? And there might be, well, Tubertini, they do three quarter of an, of an ounce, <coughs> one ounce and one and a half ounce tip. When to use them? I'm trying, I'm always trying to use the smallest tip, well I mean the more delicate tip, which is three quarter of an ounce on that rod. I always try to use as small as tip as I can, okay? Because I'll be able to see the bites better, because it's, it's softer. So always try to use as soft as tape you can, but sometimes it depends on the weather conditions. Sometimes you have to go for one, one and a half ounce tip or maybe even two ounce tip. If you get, if there's, if there's strong wind or something like that, oh, I think I had a bite there. If there's strong wind or something like that, bit of, bit of a, of a wave and stuff like that you know yeah I have to use stronger tip now the rigs I use today it's a, it's a helicopter rig I use that quite often while I'm fishing it's a it's a fantastic rig to be honest it's it's really tangle free if you have to cast out like 70 meters 70 tons whatever you don't want to be you don't want to get tangled you know what i mean so helicopter rig i think it's perfect for it Now if you don't know how to tie the rigs or how to make them and when to use them, uh, go back to my previous video, uh, it calls My Fido Rigs and you can find out like how to tie them, uh, when to use them, okay? Now, a few words about the feeders. Um, as you can see, there's plenty of feeders out there on the market. Uh, loads of different types. So, I have a good few of them here, just to show you. Now, these are the cage feeders. These are the cage feeders, and they're open window feeders, okay? Now, when to use them? This one here, it's a Guru 
bay tub feeder okay it has weight at the bottom so it it helps you to cast out further out with the with the weight at the bottom and you can put a load of gram bait casters maggots in it and pre-bait your swim before you start fishing so maybe 10 of them kick off the session with 10 of them it'll be great in the summer time not, not not the winter time okay now there's another type of cage feeder as you can see it's an open cage feeder with the weight at the side that's the weight now i i would only use them if i fish close in like up to 30 meters out okay now this one here, it's another version of cage feeder, but this one has the weight at the bottom, okay? So it means it's easier to cast out further, okay? So if I want to, in the summer times, there's plenty of fish out there, you're catching one after another, just to keep them in your swim, I would recommend to use that, but only when the venue is quite shallow two maybe to four meters deep that's all okay when the venue is deeper i would recommend to use open window feeder now another cage feeder again there's loads of different types different sizes now there uh, again the weight is at the bottom there they're guru uh, they're guru feeders uh, you can easily check the you can easily change the weight the removable so you can you can change the weight you can just get the weights different different weights change it if you want it uh, when would i use them i always use them when i'm fishing close in uh, when i'm catching fast okay roach mainly roach and hybrids and stuff like that uh, that's when I use them uh, Again on the shallower venue, okay now we have open windows feeders open window feeders <clears throat> There's again two different types There's cage open feeder open window feeder and there's solid one, okay this one again uh, There as you can see the weight is at the bottom of course so they're just it's easy to cast it's easy to cast out photo right and it's easy to be accurate because they fly like a very good they're, they're just very good even if you get like a windy windy days always use feeder uh, open window feeders okay they're very good to cast uh, now if i fishing on a deep venue about let's say five eight meters deep or something like that i always use solid feeders solid plastic open window feeder okay because i want my gram bait casters sweet corn chop worms whatever you put it in i want this i want to keep this at the bottom okay so this feeder it's really good for uh, distance fishing and if you want to keep your bait at the bottom and that's it really again loads of different sizes if you want if you want more bait in your swim use bigger ones if you want if you don't want too much bait in your swim there's not that many fish out there use smaller ones simple as that fishing for about 20 minutes and I couldn't get the bite, but uh, I just got two roach. Nice roach. So we'll see, can we get some more? Once again, that's 71 turns. 
which is about 68, 7, 8 meters. I'm using helicopter rig, 90 centimeter hook lens, two dead red maggots. It's a three quarter of an ounce tip. I always trying to use, always trying to use the softest tip as I can, okay? It's not bad weather today. There's no wind really, so, so I can use the soft tip if there was a, a high, strong wind or something. But then you have to use like one, one and a half ounce tip. There it is, I have another fish, I think it's another roach, that's all I've been getting today, just a roach, some of them are really nice, like 300 grams, easy, this one isn't that big, Hope you'll be able to see that. This one is about 150 grams. And there it is, another fish. I think it's a nice roach. Not as big as I thought, <laughs> but it's a nice roach. I'd say about uh, a 200 grams. There we have another fish. I'd say another roach. That's all I'm getting today. This fish is just green. Nice roach. She's about 250 grams, I'd say. Well, guys, that's me done for today. I got about 20 roach in two and a half hour fishing, so not too bad. Uh, a few words at the end. Uh, as you know, Christmas is about three weeks away, so I'm not sure if I see you again this side of the Christmas. If not, I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Uh, 
I also have something for you guys. There's a, a, I have a two vouchers to give away, okay? One is, the, the first one is a box of ground bait. It's a 10 bags of ground bait, okay? And the other one is six months membership in Oakland, okay? It's from May to October next year. Now all you have to do to win those bow vouchers, <clears throat> all you have to do is, you have to like the video, uh, subscribe my channel, and share the link with the video on your Facebook. That's all you have to do, okay? And the draw will take place on the Facebook, I'd say, and it'll be, it'll be before Christmas, this side of a Christmas anyway. Now, once I pick your name, I'm gonna post them into you, and you can have it. So, yeah, it'll be more info on the Facebook in about a week or time or so. <clears throat> so keep an eye on the Facebook and thanks guys for watching and I will see you next time.